Can I clear one thing up? Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for anybody who thought we partnered up, stayed on productions for the Who Body Challenge to pick certain winners, that just wasn't true. So all the love conspiracy theories y'all can get rid of because you know, shit, it was just fair and transparent, and that's all I can tell y'all. <laughs> y'all ain't see that? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like they was like, I guess because whoever they felt like y'all had a big influence on who people was voting for. So they were saying we was cheating and we paid and all this type of. Oh, so I just want to clear that up. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you know. <laughs> I just want to clear that up. We good. Well, I know you from um, being a baseball player. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you transition from that stage in your life, being a sports, a professional athlete, to a big time label? Um, I mean, you know. I just retired and you know I had nothing else to do so I'm the type of person I wanted to do something that I like doing. Me and T Ferris we've been friends since we were like nine years old. We played Little League Baseball together so you know I always had a, a love for the uh, you know rap scene here in Houston. I saw it was kind of you know fizzling a little bit. Felt like we hadn't had like nothing major in a long time so I told T you know it would be a good idea to get together. And you know what I'm saying? Let's try to see if we can capture that, uh, you know, that social house magic they had. So, you know, that's what happened. We done locked up, and we've been we've been rocking ever since. It's been almost going on two years now, and we've been together every day, working on 1501. And you know, I like the direction it's going in. So, you, how long was you playing baseball before you? Oh, I was playing baseball since I was 17. I got drafted in 1999. I jumped Davis High School on the north side, and um. You know, I've been gone ever since then. I played for 15 years in the major leagues, you know, so I've been playing baseball over 20 years. And, um, you know, I finally retired and came back home. Your first, who was your first artist? My first artist? Mm -hmm. My first artist was, um, was it Lula or Harry Lula? One of them. I can't remember. They about the same time, yeah, you know, I think. I think they was about the same time, you know what I'm saying? So my it's one of the ruler, hallelujah, one of them. And young ruler, right? Yeah. Okay. Is he he's no longer with 1501? I mean, you know, we kinda of putting stuff on hold with that right now, but you know, technically he is. And how many artists do you have signed right now with 1501? How many artists I have signed? Oof, I got like let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It's like eight right now, I think, you know what I'm saying? But it's two of them, Hallelujah and, and, and Megan are the main two right now that we pushing on the daily, you know, but we still got, uh, we got Quan um, um, Sleep Dog over in the ward, and we kind of getting they stuff gradually coming too, so those are like the three things that we most, most focus on right now. Working with the artists that you have now, what part do you play in? Um, I just play the part of just trying to like make sure they do with everything they need to do. You know, for like being on time for some recording on certain songs. You know, uh, bringing an idea to the table on what we might want you to rap about or something like that. So we just, you know, just kind of we just try to make sure everybody what they at, you know kind of manage slash on the type of thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. So would you say that you're making about the same because I read somewhere that your uh, you work in baseball 150 million on high accident. So um, would you say that you're on the same level doing recording stuff as you think about the money about the same? But you uh, am I making baseball money and rap yet? That's true. Not yet, you know, but you know, we got we on the path. That's what we're trying to get to, you know, we're working to them. But you know, I like what we're doing. And um, you know, it's just the same thing in baseball. I did was retired in baseball, applied the same work to this. And I feel like, you know, where I'm at right now, 
a little quicker than what most people would be normally if they took if they started when I started, you know. So yeah, I like I like the direction we're going in. So you feel like you're making a good investment in your Exactly, yeah, yeah. Do you feel tension on like other labels? There ain't no other labels really, you know, but uh, so yeah. I mean, so have you like established, you know, uh, a relationship with uh, Rap-A-Lot? Well, the thing about Rap-A-Lot is we from the same neighborhood, you know, I'm from Phil Ward, you know, mm -hmm. so we grew up watching that, you know, there's no um, tension or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? They they do, I know they got the Young Wave and all, and, uh, and stuff like that going on, and we got what we going on, and that's, that's just it, you know, there's no uh, tension or nothing like that. Y'all do have like a, a relationship. What you mean, like, like? You're saying it's no tension, but it's this like y'all got like a good relationship. Or I, you got to, I don't know what you mean, like, like we see each other out and stuff like that. Yeah, we speak and stuff like that. But like, as far as like, cause his artists, I think they like some. But they got like bigger artists right now, so I think they're a little still bigger. They're a little bit more bigger than us right now, so we still kind of like the growing, the growing uh, labor is kind of like. You know, trying to take notes here and there and watching, you know what I'm saying? Getting like little little things that can help us get to that get to that level, you know. Now you and um fifteen oh one and D S D one has had like similar artists. Well, really the same artists like kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um how is how is that? Like how do y'all yeah, work? Oh no, they just you know, um that's T Ferris, uh him and Rick over there, you know, they had they little joint deal together, you know, so we kind of just brought it all together, you know, and, uh, you know, helping them out with certain artists who we wanted to put out there and stuff like that. So, um, you know, Rick over there, we actually, we built the studio over there and everything. So, you know, it was just, we just kind of like work hand in hand together with certain artists that we might want to work with. Now, one of the artists, um, Son of Bam, mm -hmm. had a post basically saying that you were trying to recreate his style into yeah. another artist yeah what was that about like what's the situation i, I still don't know see him and t Ferris got they got a deep rooted really type of relationship you know what i'm saying and, and i i didn't even really know because i just i just didn't know i knew everything but um you know i even i even asked him what he was talking about because i don't i don't know which one of the artists sound like him but you know they had their little talk or whatever him and t Ferris, and they talked to that and they good now, so it's like, you know, just one of those things where I think signals got crossed, so wasn't the communication went right between the two, and you know, social media, man, is that outlet to just spaz out at times, and that's kind of what happened, and you know, it's all good, though. Got love, stuff again. Now, T. Ferris, what is his role in 15? You mentioned him a couple times. T. Ferris, he just runs pretty much everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, he the one had, like, all the success of Swisher House and stuff like that, Mike Jones and, and all that power wow. So, you know, he's a childhood friend of mine, so he's the only person that I actually trust and just just say, hey T, go take care of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't have to like second guess him, I don't have to worry about him stealing from me, I don't have to, you know what I'm saying, worry about nothing real trustworthy. And he knows the game, so you know it only makes sense for me to go get somebody who's done it before and you know put my trust in plus he's a childhood friend so it makes it even easier for me to just 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 let him do his thing you know so would you having um a female artist maybe there is rumors and speculation that you have something going on with me you want to address that <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's anybody anytime you see from back when ja Rule and lashanti was together oh you know ja Rule, but we was wrong about that so it was like it's just, I know that's what it's always going to be. You watch all the um, movie stories from what, Tupac, no, not Tupac, Big and Lil' Kim, you know, so you know not to like mix that, you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be bad every single time. So me as a businessman, I don't mix business with pleasure, you know, even though y'all may think I do, you know, I don't. I, you know what I'm saying? Some things you just got to keep, you got to keep the business with, you know, and that's one of them. You know, I have a rule, like, you know, I don't any any type of girl I, I decide to do business with, I don't that's over with, you know what I'm saying? So so that's just me personally. I feel like you gotta be disciplined in certain areas if you wanna, you know, win big and that's one of the areas where I just you know what I'm saying, my discipline is just key. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's your question though. We don't got nothing going on, you know what I'm saying? But I like when people ask questions about it because if that's what they wanna think, then that's cool. That's what entertain you for the day. 
whatever. Whatever, but you know, I'm telling you, it ain't nothing happening. <laughs> Now, a lot of people will say that's like the reason you and your ex-fiance ever Yeah, yeah that's just, you know, they they need something to say, you know what I'm saying? I try to hide from those people, they find me out there, they obsessed with my life for some reason, I don't know why. But, you know, you know me and Evelyn broke up for a whole other another reason. They ain't, I ain't even know Megan when we broke up, you know what I'm saying? That was like two years ago almost, so I ain't even know Megan then. But, you know, if, if it works for the narrative at the moment, then it works. My oh. followers go up every time they think anything like that. So, you know, if that's what got y'all tuning in, tune in to it. I'm, I'm cool. Tune in to see something like yeah, bigger. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> for like, real. the speculation was that you and Evelyn broke up with because you have a child on the way for somebody else. Yeah, I got a child on the way, but I don't, It was, that wasn't the reason. Me and Evelyn broke up like two years ago. You know, they just not catching up on shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they always late on everything I do. They don't be knowing. But, you know, that ain't why. You know, we, this, me and Evelyn been separated for so long already. It's like, it's funny to me when I see that shit. But, I mean, like I said, if it works for the narrative at the moment, then that's cool. Y'all come check it out. And you'll see that ain't the case. But, you know. So why did y'all break up? We broke up because, you know, people, it's, you come a time where you realize you got to go your way and they got to go there. It just ain't working. Whatever the situation, it just ain't working for you at the moment, you know. And you make a decision as, as adults to, you know, go your separate way. And no 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 harm feelings, you know. We got a son together. So we always got to talk and stuff like that. But um, we, don't, we, don't, we ain't tripping about that. You know what I'm saying? So do you feel like y'all have a good relationship? For as far as now, because y'all do have a son together. Yeah, I mean, we just was cool already, you know what I'm saying? So it don't really be, we don't, I don't, it wasn't nothing to be mad about, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, you know, we uh, we got a son together, so it ain't no need to be beefing all the time. We gotta, like, make it work. Y'all see, uh, who that? Alicia Keys, and, and they all, you know, I'm gonna be that, that's me. I'm gonna make it work. <laughs> For real. Now, was it easier, like, for the separation, like, by you, did you really let her keep the ring? And mm -hmm. she kind of let it go? And y'all kind of, like, made it? Yeah, I let her keep, man, look, I ain't. My mama told me not to be an Indian giver when I was in the eighth grade. I tried to take my little girlfriend ring back from, you know what I'm saying? She started crying, you know, kind of, I said, after that, I never took nothing back from somebody, you know? So, you know, gave it to her. She, she still had diamonds from the other niggas that gave it to her before I came. So, shit, I ain't, I ain't nobody, you know, they can have it once they get it, yeah. She, she, I, she got some diamonds over there, I ain't gonna lie. Rainy day, baby. Yeah, for sure. Make shiny day. <laughs> for sure. Now, building 1501, um, you said you started two years ago. Mm -hmm. Is, where is that now? Is this what you, is it all going Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's moving fast now, you know, like, it's like, sometimes you gotta kick, you gotta, you gotta stay on top of everything because it daily, daily growing, you know, so, um, when I first started, you know, we just were just trying to build a foundation and deal with, you know, artists and, and build them and do all that stuff. And then, you know, we just kind of caught a break with the Megan situation. And, uh, you know, it's kind of made us move a little faster than probably we normally would have moved. So, you know, I like the position we're in right now. We still got a lot of work to do. And we don't mind putting in that work, like Harry Louis said. So that's a good thing about us, man. We all got the same goal over here. And it's different when you got a, everybody on your team, y'all all chasing that same thing, y'all hungry like that. So, you know, this is why you see the, the, the daily improvements within our organization. And how, um, how long into 1501 did May come along? Man, we just got making in like February. You know, oh. that's what I'm saying, see? <laughs> yeah, we just got her, we just got her in February. So, you know, like I said, it's been, it's been fast for her, you know, and she been, you know, shout out to Malaya, because if I wasn't just strolling on your page one day, I wouldn't have never saw her, you know, so, uh, she, you know, want to give you free tickets whenever you want them, because, you know, I, I truly, I wouldn't even seen, I was new to social media, I just got home, people are surprised that I'm even on the internet, you know, because I just never did that type of stuff, I was so private, but, um, I just had, just got on the social media and just happened to be strolling, and saw her rapping, so, um, shit. You know, rest history so far. <laughs> was it easy, like, grabbing her, did you kind of go through it? No, ain't nothing easy. You know her mother, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing easy. But, you know, we did, we just went through everything the right way. 
and you know we gained their trust and let them know that we was behind them and they felt like you know we had their back and, and we felt the same way. So it was a it was a mutual a mutual type of type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you looking to sign other female artists? Of course I am. You know, I'm a business at the end of the day. I can't stop. You know, Big just, she just knocking it down for the girls here in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Like, we never had a big star here from Houston. We had a big rappers. But now we never had a big, a big, you know, woman like that. Woman rapper like that. You know, like that, um, you know, put, put out sex appeal and can actually rap, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like she just gonna open the door for all other little, Look, Megan's coming behind her, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to be like the pipeline to success for everybody that want to try to rap, not just one person. What um, female artists do you have your eye on? Man, I don't even... <laughs> it's a couple of them, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to say their name because, you know, I don't like to let people know what I'm looking at because, you know what I'm saying, it's a little, you know, a little cat and mouse game in my head with that stuff. So I don't like to just kind of show my hand what I'm looking at, but I am mean, looking though, I ain't gonna lie with you. You had, uh, you feel me, as the number uh, two spot on the challenge you had, so what do you think about her? I think she gonna rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, she just, you know, she, I thought she was gonna win, but, uh, you know, that's that's the example right there of somebody who just needed to be heard, you know what I'm saying? I feel like more people know who she is now after the challenge, and, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's the type of time that we're looking for. <laughs> now, the winner being Dollar, mm -hmm. um, what was you feel like, well, how do you feel, but uh -huh. that, that was well deserved? Yeah, he won the fan square. You know, like I said, people wanted to complain about the voters, but my voters were voting too, so that was kind of like the, the, the split the difference, you know? So, um, Killer dropped out, he said he was gonna win, you know, as soon as, soon as he dropped out, he was like, what happened to Killer? I'm like, he dropped out, he said, well, this is, this, I said, this is a piece of cake. And you know, I'm like, all right, whatever, shit, one, two, so, you know? So he gonna call it, he gonna be here during the week. Y'all gonna see, we gonna try to play with him and kind of see what, what we can come up with. Like, we gonna, we gonna check him out. You know, it wasn't just to do that band, we don't deal with him no more, you know? Even all the contestants, like the final eight, I think we gonna just kind of have him come over to the studio and, um, and just work on, you know, just try to try to see what they got, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm really all about trying to trying to let Houston be heard, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we're a powerhouse, and we've been down for too long. You know, it's like Texas Longhorns or something. They ain't gonna go too long without without rebuilding. They gonna have their little droughts, and you know what I'm saying? I look at the rap game, it's like that too. You know, we're gonna have our little drought, but then we're gonna be a powerhouse again, you know what I'm saying? So I want to be a part of building it, yeah. <sighs> So with our summer list, we had a couple of your artists on it. Did you see it? Did you um, see the list? Which one? Summer list? Summer list. Oh, the, uh, oh, you talking about top of 20? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So uh, what do you think about it? I, you know, like I say, look, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we like number one spots, but we understand that we've been progressing. You know what I'm saying? And we like, as long as we progressing, you know, we cool with it. You know what I'm saying? We still got a little work to do to get that number one spot. But, you know, like I said, we don't mind working over here. And then you got Harry Louie lurking right behind us. So I know he's gonna put some pressure on some people here in a little bit. Cause like y'all can see, we got all kind of, this him playing in the back still. So we gonna get it out too. I know y'all, I know that's one of y'all big words. Yeah, we gonna get it out. You find yourself dipping in the, in the rapping? In the rapping? Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't do no rapping. I wish I could rap though, you know, my swag, you know, we was rapping, but you know. I can't put the words together and do all that. Plus, nobody will never take me serious as a rapper, you know, I'm a baseball player. They have a hard time, uh, you know, seeing me convert to this role that I'm doing right now. So I just try to stay in my lane and don't do none of that rapping. But sometimes, maybe if we like had a few shots or something, I might just play with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as far as like um, sports, Mm -hmm. And then also to play football at school. Nebraska. Yeah, I signed with Nebraska. You know, I was number one quarterback coming out of high school in 1999. You know, I'm old. Yeah, I had a scholarship to go to Nebraska. But then I ended up getting drafted in baseball. So, you know, uh, I'm from Fifth Ward. You know, they gave me a million dollars out of high school. You know, they didn't have to, they didn't have to tell me that. 
they ain't have to tell me twice, you know. I was 17, so, and, you know, I ain't never, I ain't look back. <laughs> For real, they blessed me early. And, you know, God just kept on blessing me. And I hope I continue to get blessed. <laughs> Retiring from baseball, that was a choice, but also thinking that you had a chance to sign with us teams. Yeah, they had a chance to sign with other teams, but I didn't want to sign with other teams because I retired because my body was hurting too bad, you know. Come the time when you're in pain all the time, so you just decide, you know. I want to be able to walk, but still, you know, have my body, you know, feel normal. So, you know, they want to they wanna run you to the wheels for all of them. I went with it. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what? Like baseball, you coaching baseball. Well, my son, you know what I'm saying? He played. He 14. I'm finna go through it all over again. That's why I'm not in a rush to get back to it, you know. But uh, yeah, I got a son and I got a baby son. He gonna all my kids gonna play, you know. So I'm finna have to go through the same process again. My son finna get drafted. He finna, you know, he, he just look just like me. He played just like me. So, so if he changed his mind and decide he wanna be a rapper. Shit, I'm gonna say, man, something slap him in the back of his head. <laughs> Tell him you gotta get his ass back out there on that baseball field. And we're on a rock. You know, now if he wanna learn to come run the business, now that's different. He can do that. <laughs> there was an artist who um, spoke on a deal that you offered, Ski Taste. Yup. What do you feel like at the time that was a good deal to give him, or do you feel like he, he just kind of. Down, you know, like I don't know. They, the you know, what I'm saying I let my man T first handle that because that's when I just got into the business. Like I, he was gonna be actually the first one. You know, I, I genuinely personally liked him. You know what I'm saying? So, um, from my understanding, we offered, we made an offer, they accepted, but then the next day they came back with something different. You know what I'm saying? So, as a businessman, uh, I'm taught that once you make an agreement on something. You don't do that, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to stick to what you what you say. Now, I could be wrong, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, once you did that, that that's a red flag for me, you know what I'm saying? So, that's what happened. So, I guess he felt like we tried to rob, say we tried to give him a chain. I don't even remember offering that, you know what I'm saying? So, I was just surprised that, that it just went public because that ain't how we do business, you know what I'm saying? Me and him, even when that happened, he, I, me and him were DM, I was DMing each other. I'm like, what's up? What you mean, robbed you? Like I can show you the, the I, I ain't messy like that, but I can show you the the uh, the DM. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, what you mean, robbed you, bro? Like you, you know, we laughing. Bro. Let me be black and all that shit. You know, cool. You can be black, but bro, like we ain't saying your name like that. You know, that's bad for business. If you're making it look like we robbing people, we're not robbing people. We offering and we negotiating. You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. So you know, I just got a little test about it because. You know, you messing with the business when you get to send Bible people. Now we can't sign other artists and shit. You know, and then it was just a big out, a bigger uh, spiral downfall on the south side. Of everybody, you know, shit, they robbing niggas. Take the 70, 30 deal and shove it up your ass, all that type of shit. I was just like, damn, okay. That's what it is. <laughs> cool. I'm resilient though, you know what I'm saying? I take all that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know a baseball player, we play 162 days a year, so that means things don't go right all the time for you, you know what I'm saying? So I can take a look, I can take people talking shit to me and I can keep coming forward, and that's what happened, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of use that as 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 a as motivation for me, as they using what I did to them, I guess, is motivation, but it's motivation for me to kind of just really rise above all that because, you know, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to bribe nobody, shit. I'm trying to give niggas an opportunity, you know what I'm saying? They ain't trying to, you know, uh, hit a lick in the beginning stages, you know what I'm saying? Go see what Lil Yachty, and go see what Migos and all them signed for when they first signed, you know what I'm saying? Niggas thinking they finna get a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. Well, ain't no record sales, ain't no, you ain't, I, mean, I don't understand that shit. But, you know, for any little niggas that wanna start, you know what I'm saying, get on and take that first step and get to, you know, the next step and take it step by step and don't wanna hurt her and thinking you finna get a hundred thousand dollars and all that type of shit. Like, hey, come fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm willing to take it step by step with any, with any little nigga that really just wanna like, you know, do things the right way. And trust me, we ain't trying to grab nobody. We ain't got to, you know what I'm saying? We trying to make sure niggas eat or at least try. You know, if you really talented out there, you know, we want to give you a real shot. 
So what is the amount of money you do offer? I mean, now that's, now negotiations is, 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 is private, you know, you don't talk about that. You know, and that's why I got upset that it was talked about. You know, you just don't, you don't talk about that. But it depends, it's different, it's different orders, you know what I'm saying? You got depend on your buzz, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it go, yeah. So are you looking to only find artists that's in Houston or are you looking at artists that live in Dallas? Well, I wanted to be Houston because, you know what I'm saying, I'm from Houston and we just, I just wanted to have that Houston artist, but, you know, right now at this point in time, for being in the game for a little bit, I'm kind of like just, you know, whatever that next little thing is, yeah, we ready to sign, we ready to go out of town, take our way, whatever, because, you know, you can only try for so long to do it in one spot, you know, you gotta move around. So are you looking to only sign rappers or are you looking at singers also? We're looking to sign talent, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they say you do R&B, I say no. I say, but if somebody come in and just start blowing in my face and singing to where I just like get chills and goosebumps, then you know, you gotta see about it. Uh-huh, yeah, you know. Make me have an out-of-body experience and shit, we can talk. <laughs> what catches your attention from like artists? I just look at like, you know, of course you're gonna go with the look. You know, I look for the confidence and just the, the authenticity about a person, like how real you is, your character, stuff like that. So, but really, you know, just that, trying to see if a person like is real and all that stuff, that's big for me now, you know, that's like one of the main things. I wanna, if that person is rapping or singing or doing something by something, I wanna know, if that's, if, is that really what they doing? You know, because that's, that's the ones who kind of really win. Yeah. So how did you go about finding your uh, engineers? Uh, they just kind of came to us um, through um, T Fairs, you know, he do the music, so everything kind of go through him with that. He find everybody. Yeah. He do he do all the music. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, when they when we need something, you know, I just I just follow T Lee, man. He got it, you know. I just make sure we get done. That's it, you know. Ain't nobody came nobody be lazy around here and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, we gotta we gotta keep it pushing forward. We don't go side to side or backwards. We just go straight ahead every day. Him in. What was that transition like? Cause you know he was kind of a hard head. You mean in the beginning? Yeah, in the beginning. In the beginning, I mean he had just he had just got out of jail. See, I just started this rapper thing cause you know I got a little nephew locked up named Nookie. He um, you know, so he the one put me on Hallelujah. He was like you got a son, you got me, you got I was just like, all right, I had never heard of Hallelujah. I was just moving back home, so. Shit, he was he was locked up when they was telling me about him then, you know what I'm saying? And he got out the first time and um, you know, we ran everything to him and, and he saw the vision and um he was he was on board, but you know, we kinda we kinda tightened him up a little bit too much in the early, you know, I'm early on, I don't really know that you ain't supposed you ain't supposed to spoil him. I kinda spoiled him a little bit when he first got out, so it kinda went to his head a little bit. So we kind of had a little issue with that, where we, you know, had our little issue, and then we went back to jail. You know what I'm saying? I, I think the second time we went back to jail, he uh, he got his mind right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened to him, but when he came back home, he came back hungry this time than he did the first time. You know, and um, shit, it was just like, ah, right, he got his mind right now. Let's go. And here we are, full speed ahead. So artists like Enzo and Marvel, are they still with the label? Yeah, uh, technically they still sign with the label, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, they, um, my Bravo right now, we just kind of, we just got everything on hold right now because, you know, it really wasn't like moving it with the units and selling and stuff like that. So we have to focus on what's, what's, what's working at the moment, you see what I'm saying? So and we ain't forgot about none of it, but, you know, we know that we can come back to it. Out of town dick riding. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you feel like that's necessary? Like out of town dick riding? I mean, I mean like dick riding what? Out of town rapper or just anything nah. out of town? Because you know, uh huh. Okay. Are you looking to 
artists that pick up and feel like they can run to other cities or, you know, reach out to people of how yep. I feel like they need to do a, portray a certain image to yep. get other people's attention. Well, that's the thing, you know, it's just that, you know, Houston got that in fighting, you know what I'm saying? That in battle that we always talking about here in Houston, you know? So, when a person get a chance to get out of town to deal with somebody out of town, they just want to deal with it because, you know, it's not having to deal with nobody that, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they trying to like be better than what's in Houston. So we think out of town is better. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I guess they look like, oh, you want to go do something out of town and this person ain't doing nothing out of town, make it look like you you're doing something better than the other person. And really, you know, <laughs> Shit, ain't nobody doing what we, I mean, I ain't gonna say nobody doing what we doing. I'm gonna say we doing the same thing that an out of towner might be doing, you know? So it's like, you know, we, they say, you know, whatever reason what they might go out of town for, I feel like we can do the same stuff here, but for some reason, out of town is better. You know, I, I, I'm all Houston, you know what I'm saying? I don't run out of town for that. Yes, I try to get my, my stuff played, but, you know, it's just, it's just a way it is sometimes. I don't know. For real, the studio built. Like, yeah, you got like, a like, blown studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, we, don't charge, we don't charge people to, to record. We don't do nothing. But it's just that inner, that inner rivalry stuff going on. You know, they always looking for, you know, something that's, they give you the edge on a person and out of town just sounds better, just look, sound better to people here in Houston that just got the simple mind and say, oh yeah, he dealing with such and such. All right, sure, such and such, we ain't doing nothing different from what we do. How, um, how long did it take you to build? This right here? It took like a year because I had to, it's a four story uh, studio, so we had to like, we had to, um, we had to remodel it from every flow. So it took like, yeah, it took about a year. You know what I'm saying? We we did everything. We came and did this right here. Other side, you know, y'all see the other side. And, um, you know, I want this to be a place where Houston artists can come and really work. You know, take it serious. And y'all see it's private outside, so nobody can't just pull up on you and disturb you or nothing like this. But I built it to cater to to artists. You know what I'm saying? Like all the way 100%. It's just a place where artists want to come and just have like a rest haven. Yeah. Why no charge for recording? Because, because you know, I feel like people need a place to like have an outlet where they can like sharpen their craft and get better. At it. You know, you gotta stay up, pay like a hundred and fifty dollars Friday or Saturday, like that add up every week. You know what I'm saying? So, so if you got a spot like this right here, you know, you can let people record. And I don't gotta like we do so much. We wouldn't have all this music if we had to go pay like a a studio or something like that every time we wanted to record because it will just be too much. So it just really could cost and um and give you a place where you can just be consistent with work, you know what I'm saying? Like like it's every day for us, you know, so that's why we feel like we like we like get better quicker because we we continually shopping and getting better at our craft. So how much would you say you invested into this the studio? Oh, I invested like a million dollars into it. Yeah, I mean, don't it look like it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all I know, cause I feel like that was a good investment. So you know, I don't have no problem doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like at the end of the day, it's gonna be well worth. It. So um, doing this. Is this like something that you are retired from again, or you feel like you don't do this? Well, I just feel like, you know, this right here, you know what I'm saying? This is like a, a fast type of life. So you do this for like three to four years, maybe you branch off, you know, hopefully we have all kind of stuff. This is just to get people attention that you back working, doing something, you know. You be successful with this, other things open up for you. You just always keep growing, you never stop, you know, you just always keep connecting and getting better and just growing as a person, you know, you just open one window closed, you just open up another one. That's it. So after this, what is next? What is next is, I have kids just growing up, you know, I'm going to be their agents when they play, so I'm going to be sports agent, financial people, I'm running everything, like, I'm, I'm a control freak, I got to run things. So, you know what I'm saying, I got that going on, 
you know, I want to get in the weed business already. You know, I'm already in it a little bit. So, you know, um, financial companies, you know, I want to help my artists learn how to save their money like we did, you know what I'm saying? So, because, you know, you know, of course, artists get their money and they blow it fast, you know what I'm saying? I want to teach them how to save their stuff so they don't have to be broke, you know what I'm saying, when they 30 and shit like this. So, all type of little stuff, like I say, you just never know, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's how I look at life. You just never, you never stop. <laughs> you yeah. So financially, you feel like that uh, you get saving money, like you're a good financial person? Uh, yeah, you know, that's what we do. You know, baseball, I teach us to save our money early. So I wouldn't be able to like, live like this. I've been retired for like two years already. I probably would have been on the news or something already if I hadn't like had the proper training on how to like just you know, monitor your money, stuff like that. You know, you gotta deal with all kinds of stuff. Texas, being in California, like it's just a lot. So, you know, you gotta really stay on top of it. And so, you know, I wanna teach that to my artists, you know, how to manage their money as well as their life. So, you know, we we'll just be learning over here, all type of little stuff. <laughs> so when you retired, the last place you was was in California? Mm-hmm, so, the Dodgers. Right, so what made you come back to you? I live here. I always had plans to come back home. I never was going to just stay. Like, I never had plans to just stay away from Houston. I've been trying to get back here since 1999, since I left. For real. <laughs> For real. I've been trying to get back ever since then. <laughs> you know, people, we love it here in Houston. I mean, you know, like, you know, when you leave, it's hard. You got to think. Like then, like just growing up in Houston like that, then one day you just like that, you just had to go. You know what I'm saying? You been back, you been gone for 20 years. Like you gonna do some time or something. Did you come back and go back to, you know, where you grew up from or did you kind of relocate yourself? Well, yeah, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't, well I can't, well I ain't gonna say you came in over there, but you know what I'm saying? I'm 1501, that's the address from what, from what, you know, where I lived in over there, so. You know what I'm saying? My family still stay in the house, all type of stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, this right here is a central area for me. And, you know what I'm saying? I, I go back and forth to see my family and stuff like that. But I, ain't, I don't live in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to ask you the 15 oh, yeah. I want, was that like? 15 I want? Yeah, that's, that's my actress. That's where they brought me home from. You know what I'm saying? Right to the house. That little house that y'all see on there. That little house, that's the actual house. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I did it like that. I want to, I want to start it up from the, I want to start it from the road of that little house right there. That's the actual 1501 house over there. You go out Hardy Street right now, you gonna go see this house right there. It's right there. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted my my whole little thing to be organically from the ground up. You know, root. Go back to where I started at. You know what I'm saying? Come out the mud twice. You know what I'm saying? Do it one time. Come back. You know, if that ain't inspiration to be and shit. I don't know what is. Yeah. Right, yeah, we asked you just blind and just weedy. Like, who is your dream? Oh, right here, this, this right here was Iceman Nick over there at Sharp's Time Mall. Oh, man, y'all know Iceman, he did real everything. He was on but. <laughs> real quick, yeah, real quick. Everybody, everybody bragging on their grills today, you know, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say that. Three times, man. I ain't got no one color. I'm a colorful. I don't like one color. Everything on me different colors. I love diamonds, bro. I ain't gonna lie. How much you say you're in And I ain't gonna even say that because you know what I'm saying? I got kids and stuff now, so niggas be like, ah, oh, man, I don't even wanna hear all that. But just know I spun the light on them, though. You know? It costs how it look, though. Just know this. Whatever you think in your mind, that's probably, you're probably right. <laughs> awesome. About it. as much as they ring. Just a lot. Right. <laughs> like. So y'all, <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> Somebody gonna get you a ring like that one day. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah, no yeah. Ask everybody. She'll show you how to get you one. Yeah. No shame. No shame. No shame. No shame. She'll show you. you know how to do that. Any last words, any last, you know, how many things that we should look forward to, any really things for 1501? Nah, just, you know, stay, stay looking, stay tuned for the future, you know what I'm saying? We're making hallelujah, we got a few more little projects coming out, you know, before, but mostly just continue to support us, you know what I'm saying? We see y'all on the rise, we trying to support y'all too, 
Yeah, you know, that's pretty much it, man. We're just trying to get the city behind us like like y'all doing, you know. I feel like, you know, y'all gonna be on top just like we is about a year from now. Come back and holler at us. We can do this interview again. If anybody trying to get in contact with me, just follow this page at um, 15 on what? Um, Shit, too. Yeah, I know, that. That's why I need to switch it, man. It's too hard. 1501 underscore certified underscore entertainment. Come on and check us out. Because we popping on the ground. Stay down Productions. productions. Okay. Yes, sir. 1501 in your area. Every day, all day, big baby. Real loudly, you know. Yeah, wait.